Lesson 4.7, Multiply Decimals, Placing the Decimal Point. We can use place value positions of decimal factors to help us insert the decimal point in the product. We count the total amount of decimal place values in all factors as the amount of decimal place values in the product. We multiply the same as whole numbers, then count the decimal hops. We have 5 tenths times 3 tenths. We multiply it just as if we were multiplying whole numbers. We do 3 times 5, which is 15. We regroup the 1 and write the 5 down. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And 0 times 5 is 0, and 0 times 0 is 0. Make sure you erase any regroupings from the previous numbers so you don't get them confused when you're multiplying the next number. We add them up and we get 15 hundredths. And we know the decimal place goes here because we count the decimal place value hops starting from the right side. We have one and here we have one. That's two hops in the factors. So there's going to be two hops in the product. One, two. The decimal point will go here. The total amount of hops, the decimal place values in the factors, will be the total amount of hops, decimal place values, in the product. We can also use estimation to predict what the whole number should be and use that number to place the decimal point in the product. We have 2 and 34 hundredths times 5 and 9 tenths. The 3 is going to tell the 2 to stay the same, so it rounds to a 2. The 9 tells the 5 to round up to a 6. We have 2 times 6, which is 12. We do the actual multiplication. We have 9 times 4, which is 36. We regroup the 3 and put the 6 down. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 3 more is 30. We regroup the 3 and put the 0 down. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 3 more is 21. And we write the 2 and the 1 here. Now we need to multiply the 5 to each place value. But let's remember to erase our regroupings so we don't confuse them. 5 times 4 is 20. We regroup the 2 and put the 0 here. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 more is 17. We regroup the 1 and put the 7 here. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 more is 11. And we write that here. Now we add them. We drop down the 6. We have a 0. 7 and 1 is 8. 2 and 1 is 3. And we drop down the 1. And we know that the whole number should be close to 12. And if we put the decimal point here at 13, 13 is close to 12. That must be where the decimal point goes. So we used estimation to the nearest whole number to help us place the decimal point. We can count the decimal place value hops in the factors to know how many decimal place value hops will be in the product. When a number is multiplied by a decimal, the decimal point moves one place to the left of the product for each decreasing place value being multiplied. So here we have 3 tenths times 4 hundredths. In the factors, we have one decimal hop, that's one place value, and one two decimal hops, that's two place values. That's three decimal hops. That's how many will be in the product. One, two, three. We know the decimal needs to go in between this zero and that zero. We might even have to add a zero as a placeholder sometimes. We have one times one tenth. We have one decimal hop. There's going to be one decimal hop in the product. And one times one tenth, it's being multiplied by one, so that's identity property. It's going to keep its identity. It's going to be one tenth. For one tenth times one tenth, we now have two hops, one here and one here. So our product is going to have two hops. It's going to equal one hundredth. When we multiply one hundredth times one tenth, we now have one, two, three decimal hops. Our product is going to have one, two, three decimal hops. It equals one thousandth. The decimal point moves one place to the left for each decreasing place value being multiplied. If we insert the decimal point in the wrong place in the product, the product will be much too small or much too large, even though the digits are in the correct order. We have 
5 tenths times 3 tenths, and it's equal to 15 hundredths. We have 100 squares here. We've shaded in 15. 15 of the 100 are shaded. It represents an area of 15 hundredths. If we mistakenly have 15 thousandth, and we put the decimal point over here on the other side of the zero, this is 15 thousandths. It would be one and a half little squares. That's too small. And if we mistakenly put it in between the one and the five, we're going to have one and five tenths. This is one and five tenths. That's too large. So it's very important to insert the decimal point in the correct place. You need to count decimal place value hops there are in the factors completely, the total number of them. There's two here. That means there's going to be two hops in the product, one, two. We multiply just as we would with whole numbers. Then starting to the right of the decimal, we count the amount of hops for the factors to know how many hops are needed in the product. So we're going to have the same numbers as if we were multiplying by whole numbers with no decimals. The digits are the same as if we were multiplying whole numbers. It's just that one hop is going to equal one place value. We have one, two in the factors. There's going to be one, two in the product. When we estimate to place a decimal point in a product, we round each factor to the nearest whole number. We'll see which whole number the product should be close to. We have 4 and 71 hundredths. The 7 tells the 4 to round up to a 5. We have 5 and 2 tenths. The 2 tells the 5 to stay at a 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So we know the answer is going to have a whole number around 25. And the decimal point is placed between the digits that make sense according to our estimate. We multiply and get a 2, 4, 4, 9, 2. And to be close to 25, we know the decimal point should go in between here. So we have 24 whole. That's close to 25. Here we need to multiply and place the decimal point with estimation. The 9 tells the 6 to round up to a 7. The 3 tells the 4 to stay the same. We have 7 times 4, which is equal to 28. So now let's multiply this and see what we actually get. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 9 is 27. We regroup the 2 and put the 7 down. 3 times 6 is 18, and 2 more is 20. Now we erase any regrouping so we don't confuse them when we multiply the next digits. 4 times 2 is 8. It goes here. 4 times 9 is 36. We regroup the 3 and put the 6 down. 4 times 6 is 24, and 3 more is 27. We draw a line, we add them, the 6 comes down, 7 plus 8 is 15, we regroup the 1, put the 5 down, 1 plus 0 plus 6 is 7, 2 plus 7 is 9, we drop down the 2, and our whole number should be about 28, so we know the decimal point goes here, 29 is close to 28. For this one, the 1 tells the 2 in the 1's place to stay the same, so it rounds to 12. And the 9 tells the 0 to go up to a 1. We have 12 times 1. That's 12. We round to the nearest whole number. Now we can multiply. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. We regroup the 1, write the 8. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 more is 10. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0, and 0 times 1 is 0. We add them, and we get a 1, 0, 8, 9. And we know the whole number should be around 12. We can put it here at 10. That's close to 12. So make sure, when you're using the estimation, that you round to the nearest whole number. So you're going to be rounding the ones place, okay? For some equations, estimation will not be the best strategy. If we have 3 tenths times 2 tenths, because both factors are much less than one whole, and we need to round to the nearest whole number, it's best if we just multiply the digits and count the hops. 
2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, and 0 times 0 is 0, we get a 0, 0, 6. There are two decimal place value hops in the factors. There's going to be two decimal place value hops in the product. We have 6 hundredths. Sophia makes a blue dress with 3 and 5 tenths yards of fabric that costs $6.25 per yard. She makes a green dress with 4 and 5 tenths yards of fabric that costs $5.25 per yard. Which dress was more expensive and how much more? So we think we need to multiply 3 and 5 tenths yards by $6.25 per yard and multiply 4 and 5 tenths yards by $5.25 per yard. Then we compare the cost of the dresses. We multiply 5 times 5 is 25. We regroup the 2, put the 5 down. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. We regroup the 1, put the 2 down. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 more is 31. We erase any regroupings so we don't confuse them when we multiply in the ones place here. 3 times 5 is 15. We regroup the 1 and we put the 5 here because we're multiplying this 3. It's going to go in this place. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 more is 7 and 3 times 6 is 18. We draw a line. We add. The 5 drops down. 2 plus 5 is 7. 1 plus 7 is 8. 3 plus 8 is 11. We regroup the 1 and put the 1 down. We have a 21. We count the decimal hops. We have 1, 2, 3. So there's going to be 1, 2, 3. Because it's money, we can round this 7 to an 8 and say that it's $21.88. Because there should only be two digits there for money. So we can round this penny up to an 8. So that's how much it cost her for the blue dress. So let's figure out the green dress. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10, 11, 12. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 more is 26. We erase any regrouping so we don't confuse them. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 more is 10. We regroup the 1. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. We add. The 5 comes down. The 2, the 6, 2 and 1 is 3. We have a 2. We have 1, 2, 3 hops in the factors. So we're going to have 1, 2, 3 hops in the product. And again, because we're dealing with money, this is the the pennies, we can round this up to $23.63 because of that half penny. Now we can compare them to find by how much more. $23.63 minus $21.88 is what we're going to subtract. We know the green dress was the one that was more expensive. So it said which dress was more expensive. We know it's the green dress, and it says how much more. We subtract and see that it's $1.75 more for the green dress. We had to do multiplication for two different equations. We had to round the pennies because it's a money amount. Then we had to use subtraction to find out how much more. Mr. Kim's zucchini garden is 17 and 62 hundredths square feet. His tomato garden is 2 and 5 tenths times larger than his zucchini garden. How many square feet larger is his tomato garden than his zucchini garden? So we think to find the square feet of the tomato garden, we need to multiply 17 and 62 hundredths times 2 and 5 tenths. Then we can use subtraction to compare them. We start, 5 times 2 is 10. We write the 1 up here to regroup it and put a 0 down. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 more is 31. 5 times 7 is 35. That's 38 with the regrouping. 5 times 1 is 5, 6, 7, 8. 
we get rid of our regrouping so we don't confuse them. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 6 is 12. Regroup the 1, put the 2 down. 2 times 7 is 14, and 1 more is 15. And 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 more is 3. We're going to add these. We have a 0, a 5, a 10, a 14, and a 4. Where does the decimal point go? We have 1, 2, 3 hops in the factors, so we're going to have 1, 2, 3 three hops in the product. We get 44 and 5 hundredths because this is a trailing zero and we can take it off, can't we? We can say it's 44 and 5 hundredths. Now we put 44 and 5 hundredths up here and we subtract 17 and 62 hundredths because we want to know how many square feet larger we know this is the square feet of the tomato garden. This is the square feet of the zucchini garden. So we subtract. We have 5 minus 2, which is a 3. We can't have 0 and take 6 away, so we regroup from the 4. It becomes a 3. That's 10 minus 6, which is 4. We regroup from the 4. It becomes a 3. And now this becomes a 13. 13 minus 7 is 6. 3 minus 1 is 2, and we know that his tomato garden is 26 and 43 hundredths square feet larger than the zucchini garden. And remember, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in the correct column. And you can use PayPal or Patreon to help support my dogs and me for all my efforts to help you. There's links in the description. can help support Lola. Our next lesson, 4.8, we're going to talk about zeros in the product. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!